More than a week after Hurricane Ian blasted through Florida, there are still many questions surrounding recovery, relief and rebuilding. William Brangham continues our coverage. Amna, search efforts for the missing or dead are still ongoing in some of the hardest hit communities in southwestern Florida. Lee County Sheriff Carmine Marcino made that clear this afternoon. This search could go on for a month. It could go on for a length of time. When there's no one there, the searches are happening. We checked over 3,500 twice, okay? We're wrapping up very, very soon, and I realize their frustration, okay? As soon as possible, I want to be back to the new norm, and I want that information out there. We got to get, we got to get through this as soon as possible, I'm working around the clock. And while the situation has improved for many, housing, food, and electricity are still in short supply. Chesa Latifi is a senior program advisor with Project Hope, which is an international nonprofit that provides relief during disasters and health crises. Chessa, thank you so much for joining us. I see you're obviously on the, on the road there uh, in the backseat of a car. Can you just give us a sense of, of how things are in the places that you're working right now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for having us. Uh, we've been seeing so much. Um, the areas that we've really been working in are the more marginalized communities um, that were that were really lacking resources even prior to Hurricane Ian and are currently still lacking resources. These areas still do not have water. They still do not have electricity. These homes that uh, that were destroyed are. Um, what the way that I keep saying this is, uh, it's a three little pigs metaphor. Your house was made of brick. Your house was fine, but if it was made of straw and stick, it's gone. And so these are the people that we're seeing that need the most support, the ones that didn't have much to begin with. And can you tell us a little bit about some of those people? I know you're interacting with them one on one. What are you hearing? What are their situations like? Uh, I met a gentleman named James yesterday whose um, his home was it was. When I say it was completely demolished, there was nothing there that was left. Uh, I spoke to him and his brother pretty extensively, and the hurricane had ripped the roof off and then tore the walls apart on his home. And, you know, the first thing he said to us, said, I, I can't find my false teeth, right? Um, and so just basic dignity. He didn't have any more. Uh, and then worse, he didn't have his glucometer. He didn't have his insulin. Uh, and he'd been without that since the hurricane hit a week ago. Uh, we were able to provide him with basic hygiene items and point him in the direction of the mobile clinic that we're supporting down the street, as well as a glucometer and um, strips to be able to test his insulin. But he needs a lot more than just that. And for people like that, is it that there aren't shelters or clinics that are available for them to go to or, or they're choosing not to go? What's the hang up there? They can't access them. They just can't access them. Uh, you know, when their homes were destroyed, their cars were destroyed if they had a car. Um, and, you know, they're a little bit in a more remote area of where the hurricane has hit. And so just the accessibility to either the major uh, shelters or distribution points or clinics, are, it's just not there. And so they're just, they keep telling us, we're just waiting for help. We're waiting for help. And is it your sense that that help is there? I mean, we we hear these reports from the local county officials, from the governor, mm -hmm. from mayors, from FEMA. Is it your sense that, that authorities are doing everything that they can to help these people? I do think that they're doing everything that they can. And there is so much centralized support, right? If you're able to access those resources, they do exist. But outside of those central resources, it's just not there. And so what are, going forward, you mentioned this one man's uh, sort of striking example. What are the more pressing needs for the, for the broader population that you're working with? Healthcare is going to be really, really important, right? Um, you see a high level of non-communicable disease, so um, diabetes and hypertension. Uh, and so, you know, I think a lot of people think about the acute needs that may be injury or trauma in an event like this, but it's going to be these long-term needs. And I can't tell you how many people we've spoken to, uh, you know, today and yesterday that still don't have their insulin and haven't had that for days, which is just a very, very dangerous situation. Um, Basic hygiene items, uh, water, 
right? Um, the water supply has been disrupted. You cannot drink the drinking water if you even have access to the drinking water. A lot of the communities that we are in uh, have well water, and so it's undrinkable. Um, and so these are, you know, that is also has the potential to spread disease. Uh, one of the areas that we're working in right now, there are families that are sleeping in their homes without roofs, right? Um, and so the children are covered in just mosquito bites everywhere. Um, it's supposed to rain this weekend. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of despair out here. I know from your background that you have traveled all over the world and responded to crises in a lot of different countries under a lot of different awful circumstances. How does this stack up in comparison? The... Uh... How this is different is the level of poverty and how isolated these people are. I've never seen anything like this. Um, I've, you know, I've, I've worked all over the world and they're just so isolated and the storm has managed to isolate them even more. Um, and, you know, there's, there's so much help going out to so many communities, but these marginalized communities are not seeing much of it, if any, at all. There's so many times that we've come to communities with basic hygiene items and they'll say, you're the first ones. You're the first ones that have been here, which is amazing considering how many people have descended onto Florida to help. All right. That is Chesta Latifi of Project Hope. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me.